Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I welcome all of you for this important and fascinating subject that is engineering thermodynamics. All of you might be aware of this thermodynamics because in your courses like plus 2 science and here also you might be exposed to the various concepts of thermodynamics. However, we will be trying to recapitulate some of the concepts in the beginning, then later on we will have to look at the application parts of the thermodynamics what we call engineering thermodynamics. So, uh, let us now look at it and uh, what do you mean by thermodynamics? Can anybody tell me? This word if you look at the word the etymology of this word, then it, it is basically originated from two Greek word. One is the thermi, other is dynamics. Thermi means it is basically the heat and dynamics means power. So, if you look at one can say that basic idea of thermodynamic is to convert this heat into power. But that was the old concept in earlier days people were you know concerned about that how to convert this heat energy into the power. Why it is so? Because to overcome the limitation of the man's physical power right and that is why if you look at this heat basically comes from the fire. That is the reason why our ancestor always revered the fire and you can see lot of you know shrutis in our Vedic literature about fire. Till today also we always river the fire as the genesis of the life in this beautiful world. So, but uh, <coughs> later on you know earlier days it was, but if you look at this is as I was telling that is the early days man's were trying to look at this how to convert this heat into power. But today the concept is little different and it has been expanded. So, today it is about the energy and its transformation. If you look at in earlier days historically energy is a new word which was basically coined by uh, in 1807 by Thomson and it was not accepted at that time and you know, whenever you give a new concept you know people do not you know take it uh, what you call as it is they always resist you know. And then you know this energy is basically accepted in the middle of the 19th century earlier days people were talking about heat caloric theory you might be knowing and then force and other things. So, if you look at the energy we do use this term in our day to day life. Right. For example, you say look I am tired I do not have energy to do the work right. So, then when I say what do you mean by energy right, it is a you know very commonly used word, but little subtle to define. I have already given the definition what by giving that example that is basically ability to do work in the you know textbook if you look at physics or something you can see that. But it is basically ability to cause any changes that we call it as energy. Even if you look at all whatever we see, whatever we think, whatever we do, it is basically manifestation of energy. For example, if I am moving my hand like this, right, is it not a manifestation of energy? Even if I am sitting quietly, for example, you are listening to me, and then are you not? expanding the energy or utilizing the energy, yes or no. 
how because even though you are sitting quietly lot of thought processes are going on in your mind right so those things are basically due to the energy transformation for example like uh, you know uh, that you will be knowing that the brain consumes the large amount of energy so also the levers of all the components of your body itself and whatever we see it is energy right why even the whatever uh, you see in the sense like your trees animals birds river sea and all are manifestation of energy and even if you go to the cosmic levels or the you know like a star moon sun right all are in motion and all are having even atom molecules all are having basically transformation of energy so therefore i would like to define in little different way that energy is an enticing eternal entity that governs all the activities of the whole universe so if you look at whatever we see this phenomenal universe is basically manifestation of energy and in you know like an interaction with the matter and then what we'll see as we go along we'll see but that let us look at a very brief you know historical perspective of thermodynamics because the history is very very you know big and rich also a lot of people have done work if you look at the basic principle of thermodynamics exist from the starting of the universe if you look at you know big bang theory then you know like the it was in the beginning very small and then expanded so from the very beginning of the creation of universe these principles will be there like it is similar to that any other physical laws for example you know if you look at a small baby will be knowing about this laws of motions or not will be experiencing certainly yes a small baby will be experiencing laws of motion because these are physical laws much before the newton could think of up you know laws of motion looking at the apple falling from a tree the law were existing so similarly thermodynamics also was uh, the basic principle of thermodynamics exist before the creation itself or before uh, from the uh, you know birth of the universe so if you look at but thermodynamics was basically vigorously being uh, pursued during the industrial revolution right because the man was very much tempted by the uh, science and its utilities to overcome its limitation that is the physical power they want to overcome the you know problems with the other animals what they are using for their movements like horses and other things right so at that time there are two people who have done very good work that is thomas sarve and uh in 1697 in england and thomas newcomen in 1712 and they have you know spent lot of time to design and develop a steam engine but unfortunately those engines were not accepted by the society because of fact that it was quite inefficient and it was puffing out and then making lot of noise right and it is not that these two guys did that a lot of other people might have burned their fingers for developing an engine to have some power convert this heat into that later on the james watt is the person who uh, improved this inefficient steam engine and could manage to develop a little better one so that it can be accepted he along with uh, matthews boltron in 1776 you know developed a engine steam engine and commercialized if you look at today that steam engine is out of business am i right but i am thinking that it may come up again some of you might have seen your steam locomotives did you see 
or maybe in old movies you will be looking at steam locomotives you know puffing out the gases and then coming out. So, this engine was the turning point for the thermodynamic as a subject to evolve because of its applications. And then uh, later on the a person who is a very very you know uh, famous and a contributed lot of work his name is Nicholas Leonard Sadi Carnot who wrote a book basically reflection of motive power of fire right. And he lived a very short life around 40 years you know, but his work is so phenomenal he is known as the father of thermodynamics it's like your Swami Vivekananda, Swami Vivekananda lived for only 40 years, but his contribution to our country and to the whole world so far uh, our Indian culture and tradition is concerned is phenomenal. So, similarly he is he has done wonderful work and is about Carnot engine and Carnot cycle which we will be discussing and later on the Lord Kelvin uh, you know he coined a word in 1849 as a thermodynamics. Earlier there was no thermodynamics as such as a word right. So, I mean this is the turning point if you look at the Carnot who really saw that how it can be done and there is several other people who have worked before that if you look at the first law and second laws which were developed around 1850 to 1870 by scientists like Jules, James J. Jules and William Rankine, you might be knowing the Rankine cycles and other things he has developed and Rudolf Clausius and Lord Kelvin were instrumental in developing the second law of thermodynamics. The first textbook was written uh, on thermodynamic by William Rankine in 1859 just after 10 years. So, that you know people can study and then uh, it can be you know taught in the universities and the new generation will come up and then contribute for the development of thermodynamics. So, uh, if you look at there is another stalwart the uh, Josiah Willard Gibbs who developed the thermodynamic into a science of broad you know say spectrum and its scope and generality has been covers almost all branches of science and engineering. <coughs> so, uh, if you look at of course, you, you might be aware of the Gibbs free energy and then Gibbs equation which we will be discussing in this course. So, it is not that these are the people who have you know really uh, developed this thermodynamic subject is still lot of people are working on that, but these are the stalwarts who are the pioneers in this field and they have done. <coughs> so, if you look at the thermodynamic is a very important subject and uh, A R Ubel Lord in 1965 he wrote a book man and energy. And he says it is a remarkable illustration of ranging power of human intellect that a principle first detected in connection with clumsy puffing of early steam engine should be found to apply the whole world and possible to the whole cosmic universe. See that means you know thermodynamic is a very important subject and which is having so much of application that it can encompass whatever the science, whatever the technology we can think of not only now also in future. <coughs> so, if you look at uh, there is a book I must recommend to you people you can read it that is a, a history of thermodynamics by Ingo Muller. Let me tell you it is not a, a book which you can read while traveling in a train or in a you know flight. It is a little serious book, but it gives a very good you know uh, uh, what you call historical perspective of how the thermodynamic is evolved and what are the issues that are still there he has also mentioned which can be you know looked at it or investigated further. So, as an engineer or a scientist some of you might be from the physics and other things. So, we need to understand what are the activities 
we need to undertake for our professional life. Can anybody tell me? Let me put another question. What are the differences between an engineer and a scientist? Can anybody tell me? You have toiled hard to come to engineering by you know like uh, this uh, what you call entrance examinations and working hard for two years. Well, what, are, what are the differences? Is there any difference? Basically, let me just tell you as all of you are not you know trying to or attempting to answer my question. So, engineer is basically try to find out whatever were not existing earlier days. For example, like your pen, ballpoint pen or your uh, any other point pen, was it there in let us say 2000 years back or 3000 years back? No. But let us say your fan, your mobile phone and other things were not there. That was being designed by the man to improve the quality of life, right. But whereas the Newton's law, the laws of thermodynamics were existing before the man could, they want to find out what it is and try to recognize what are the physical laws that govern the activities of the nature and then try to understand, utilize it for the development of engineering product or the technology. So, if you look at the main activities of an engineer is basically to design and develop a product and process, right. What for? To improve the quality of life. And when you are doing that, you will have to look at also the nature, right. And when you do that, you will also need to find out how to improve the, a product or a project process which is already exist. Always there is a scope of improving it. And then when you do that, these activities, uh, then you will have to use the available resources. And what are the available resources? The available resources are energy, that is the very important, what we will be dealing with in this course and the space and the time. Suppose you want to design a product, it has to be done quickly, otherwise the market will not look at you. You may take some many years to develop a product, but it may not be accepted and it has been happened, it has happened in the history also. So, uh, if you look at all those things have to be uh, you know optimally used. That means, an engineer has to work under a lot of constraints, right. So, I will not dwell upon about the engineering aspect, but I will tell you that it is very important. Let us take an example, you know like hydrogen is a very benign fuel today, am I right? Because of fossil fuel is getting depleted and not only that it is affecting the environment adversely. Therefore, like you know hydrogen is considered as a very benign fuel and it has, it has to be used that people are propagating it. So, that the we can avoid the pollution or the environmental pollutions, right. So, for that we may need to use hydrogen because we know hydrogen will be reacting with oxygen going to the what product water and also little bit NOx may be produced in the process of during combustion or the burning of hydrogen. But hydrogen is not available with us in the natural form, so there has to be produced. Now, if you want to produce, how you can produce hydrogen? What are the ways and means? You people might be aware, am I right? Let us say we can make it electrolysis of water, right? We can split the hydrogen and uh, water, we can split the water into hydrogen oxygen, it has to be separated so that you know you can collect it. And there is another way of steam carbon reaction, like we are having carbon, lot of carbons are there, right, in forms of fuel and coal and the several other things. Like carbon can be reacting with water going to the carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So, carbon monoxide is reacting with water going to the carbon dioxide and hydrogen. 
right. So, if you look at these are endothermic reactions, we need to supply certain amount of energy and means to elevate its temperature otherwise it would not work. Beside this we will be using catalyst right for that to enhance the reaction rate and the reaction can go forward, it can go backward and then we will have to see what extent it can go and so also, so also there is another way of doing like you can use the methane steam reactions. Similarly, methane will be reacting with uh, water and it is going to the product of carbon monoxide and 3 moles of hydrogen and again this uh, shift water shift reaction like carbon monoxide reacting with the water going to the carbon dioxide and hydrogen. Now, if you look at this process already existing and then or we may have to de develop because there are several other things are coming up in the process of developing uh, producing hydrogen like your gasoline can be used or methanol some several other things. Now, you need to look at like uh, this you know ways of producing hydrogen, but however, from the thermodynamic point of view you need to look at you know uh, often ask certain questions. In these reactions whether it is possible you know are these chemical reactions or physical processes are possible and even if it is possible then we will have to say how much energy is required to sustain this work because as I told these are endothermic. If we guzzle more amount of energy what it can produce by the burning of hydrogen then it would not be accepted. And to what extent does the chemical and reaction physical change proceed that also we need to look at it we and what extent environment gets affected earlier days people are not bother about environment, but today it is very important otherwise you know survival of human being itself will be at stake. So, is there any scope of improving performance of a system or a process because always we want to improve what extent what is the limit of that whether or we will be spending lot of time and finding out you know like a, this thing and then we later on we find look it is not the well posed problem right. It is not possible to go beyond right and which will be uh, you know be answered with the help of thermodynamic laws. So, therefore, you know you need to have a thorough knowledge of thermodynamics otherwise it is very difficult to look at these processes. <coughs> and if I summarize what is thermodynamic whenever we are dealing with thermodynamic we will be uh, basically looking at the first law of thermodynamics which is energy and its transformation you might be knowing that uh, you know energy can neither be created nor be destroyed it can be converted from one form to other right is not it that is the law which you might have heard, but what is this implication what is the limitation that you need to understand right. And we will be discussing elaborately about the first law of thermodynamics and we will be applying it uh, to for analyzing certain problems related to you know engineering aspects uh, of that. And the another thing is very important which is the second law of thermodynamics which will be talking about equilibrium process. That means, what is the equilibrium and all those things we will be discussing, but it will be also telling you what extent the a chemical reaction can proceed or a process can proceed and whether it will be feasible or not to have a process or a product you know like kind of things. So, that will be give you the direction and zeroth law of thermodynamic of course, all of you know and it is uh, basically a talking about thermal equilibrium which we will be discussing. And we will be mostly applying this first law and second law and we will be taking care of zeroth law sometime and we will be defining a term which is known as entropy and entropy is very important it is not only applied for the thermodynamics or the engineering applications nowadays people are applying for economics and other things. So, that is the third law which is defining the entropy, but we would not be using much, but what we will be using 
in our course is the first law and second law of thermodynamic and zeroth law to some extent. So, all these four laws are based on experimental observations right, which cannot be proved directly like your you know you people are very much gaga about mathematics. Of course, mathematics is very important because it is the language of our science, but however you know these are all based on experimental. If some of you could prove that these experimental observations based on which these laws are being you know uh, put forwarded and being utilized are wrong, then you know you will definitely be contributing a lot. So, there is therefore, lot of you know scope will be there to relook at it. Of course, uh, you know one has to have that courage to challenge these laws and prove that it is wrong. So, uh, if you look at thermodynamic is a very fascinating subject used in almost all engineering branches. So, uh, I will sum it up saying that what the thermodynamic we will be looking at in this course is basically a energy and entropy and equilibrium this is a like a triangle you know, but a question arises whether it is related to the human life. When you talk about this human life is basically is having body and you are having a mind and there is a spirit and this would be in balance right. So, the question arises whether you can say that thermodynamic is can be related to the human life and one can explain of course, that I, I always believe that lot of your emotion and your happiness sorrow other things can be explained using the thermodynamic law provided you know you can think about it. So, we will be not dealing with those things, but I uh, we will be dealing with the general thing. Let us look at applications of thermodynamics right. What are the application? Can anybody tell me? What are the application you are aware? So, you can look at your household even right now in this room right. You are having let us say camera, you are having light right. So, these are all or you are having air condition in this room. So, these are all thermodynamically you know systems which can be analyzed with the help of thermodynamic laws. So, just to give you some example like as almost all engineering activity involves the energy and its interaction with the matter. So, let us take for a few examples of them. For example, we use in our modern day life to have a better quality life what we call uh, that is you know air conditioner and refrigerators most of the houses in urban areas we are having of course, you should have enough money to purchase those product and humidifiers, cooking stove of course, cooking stove most of the people have to use you know because they will have to cook food without food what you will do. So, uh, iron, TV, mobile, pressure cooker and so on so forth you can think of lot of things right. And the if you look at industrial application enormous I have given few of them like your power plants right. We get this you know uh, energy whatever the electrical energy or any other form of energy we get you know like electricity we get that is being uh, you know uh, developed or that is being produced in power plants. We are having coal power plant, hydraulic power plant, thermal power plant, gas, gas based power plant right which we will be discussing about and even your automobiles, rocket engines, jet engines, cryogenic systems right. And uh, they of course, nowadays people are very much concerned about uh, how to develop the power using the alternative energy sources like solar, wind, biomass and medical applications you know like we uh, there are several products which can and cooling and heating systems and so on so forth. There are several of them one can think of 
application wise. So, if you look at the human body itself, why human body, even animal okay, is a very fascinating thermodynamic device. We do a lot of you know like uh, uh, what you call uh, things in the body itself can be analyzed using the thermodynamic laws. For example, if you look at energy like if you take more food what will happen? If you won't do exercise what will happen? You become more fat right, you become chewy. So, that you know one has to also talk about that. So, if you look at refrigerator and we are having solar cell nowadays lot of uh, effort are being made to utilize the solar energy in our country, because we are getting a lot large amount of solar energy right and that can be utilized. We are having gas turbine engines and your furnace which are being used for process industries like for producing iron, copper and uh, there are several other places like we use these furnaces. And if you look at we are having a very good uh, you know ambitious space programs like spacecraft we are very good at this moment uh, in, in the entire world and it is quite cheaper to produce indigenous spacecraft and uh, that those components can be analyzed by using the laws of thermodynamics. As I told the coal, coal power plants like uh, if you look at you can get this coal and then you are having a boiler and it can be having a steam you know it can be uh, expanded in a turbine and then you can get connected this turbine to the uh, what you call generators and you can get this power to the transmission and then you will get power. So, most of uh, in India a major chunk of power produced by the burning of coal. <coughs> And uh, recent time you can get converted directly the uh, what you call chemical energy into the directly to the electricity that is the fuel cell and lot of research is going on at this moment on the fuel cell development not only in our country in outside country also. <coughs> so, if you look at the scope of thermodynamic is quite enormous I will be giving you some of them like you can think of equilibrium thermodynamic which we will be discussing basically in this course. And there is a non equilibrium thermodynamics uh, which we will not be looking at and chemical thermodynamics those people from the chemical engineering they will have to take this course chemical thermodynamics and atmospheric thermodynamics which is quite important you know in the global warming people are trying to understand what are the reasons and other things. So, it is quite important. Uh, nowadays and geological thermodynamics you can think of industrial ecology today ecology is, is in trouble and therefore, lot of you know and due to the industrial uh, development and then we are spoiling the environment uh, and we need to understand what is happening and how to talk about it. So, there is a th thermal and statistical physics which is uh, quite uh, you know important in uh, looking at the things and then that is also thermodynamic comes into picture. Quantum thermodynamics to look at the quantum physics and statistical thermodynamics uh, which we will not be discussing about maybe I will just give you glimpses of it and there is a black hole thermodynamics why this black hole how it is coming you know thermodynamics knowledge is very important in talking about black holes. And biological thermodynamics if some of you are from maybe biology you can look at there is a very interesting book is there uh, you know which you can study if you are interested I can tell you later on. And the psychometric, psychometric we will be discussing little bit in your course whenever we are talking about refrigeration and air conditioning. And the thermo economics this is a relatively you know new subject, but however you know it is speaking of you can talk about economics and then apply the law of thermodynamics. So, therefore, these are very important you know like this thing one can think of. <coughs> Let me tell you that what Albert Einstein you know perceived the thermodynamic as a subject how does he per perceive and he is one of the greatest you know scientist of the 21st century and is the best one of the best minds whatever human race has produced and he says that it is like a theory is impressive the greater the simplicity of its premises is 
the more the different kinds of things it relates the more extended it is is its area of applicability. And therefore, the deep impression the thermodynamics made upon me see you was impressed by this thermodynamic because it is a very simple and also very elegant in nature. And it is the only physical theory of universal content which I am convinced that within the framework of the applicability of the basic concepts it will never be overthrown. See he, he has you know given so much of emphasis the importance of thermodynamics therefore, it is very important for you to look at thermodynamics whatever the field you take whether engineering whether it is science whether economics whatever it may be thermodynamic plays a very important role I hope and wish that you will study thermodynamic more seriously and try to understand and apply in your profession and your professional and personal life. So, let me just tell you that let us learn about thermodynamic a mature engineering science topic that deals with all the terms of energy and whose manifestation propels the society an essential curriculum of engineering needs a proper and profound understanding. So, this is very important thing and then one has to study and what we will be dealing with this course is basically to start with the few definitions and concepts which are quite important and we will be mostly discussing about SI units, system and properties, energy and we will be talking about thermodynamic equilibrium the concept of thermodynamic equilibrium then we will be discussing about work and you know various forms of work which you might be knowing, but we will recapitulate it and state postulate which is important for the kind of thermodynamic which we will be dealing with in this course. And we will be looking at zero law of thermodynamics later on we will be also dwelling upon the temperature scale which is quite important. As the you know thermodynamic will be dealing with the matter because it is basically energy will be interacting with the matter. So, we will be looking at uh, you know properties concerned with the thermodynamic the like pure substance and phase change processes property data like mathematical equations tabular form and uh, you know graphical thermodynamical data uh, diagrams which we will be looking at to look at the data because data is important. And we will be uh, looking at steam table and uh, you will be using the steam table and uh, in your exam and representation of data how we can represent the data is very important. And we will be looking at ideal gas law, Van der Waals equation of state and also few of the uh, what you call real gas laws or the law gas laws mean for the real gases we will be discussing and we will be looking at compressibility chart. And in the first law of thermodynamic we which we will be applying for the non flow processes and we will be taking several applications uh, both covering both the steady state and unsteady states and throttling processes uh, kind of things. And we will be looking at charging and discharging of tanks or the uh, uh, pressure tanks and several other examples we will be considering. Then we will move to the first law of uh, thermodynamics for the non flow process to the reacting chemical reacting systems chemically reacting systems. Uh, and we will be also looking at fuel and combustion these uh, some of you will be knowing this thing like theoretical air fuel ratio heat of reactions and adiabatic flame temperatures and other things. So, then we will be moving to the second law of thermodynamic its application and um, before really uh, looking at thermodyn uh, second law of thermodynamic we need to understand what is the limitation of first law of thermodynamics heat engines and heat pumps and refrigerator few of the examples we will be taking how to analyze them. And then we will be looking at the second law of thermodynamics in that Kelvin Planck and the classic statements and their equivalences we will be discussing. 
and uh, reversible irreversible processes will be enumerating them and then uh, of course, the, as I mentioned that Carnot cycle and Carnot principles which will be discussing and uh, uh, this uh, you know second law of thermodynamics. Beside this there is a concept known as availability, which is very important for uh, analyzing and then we will be talking about a exergy analysis. Uh, I think you may not be aware like your entropy exergy is another terminology or this thing we will be using this availability. And later on we will be moving to the power plants and various power cycles thermodynamic cycles which will be discussing Rankine cycle, ideal and reheat cycles, regenerative cycles all those things on the this Rankine cycle uh, you know various versions which we will be looking at. And then we will be looking at gas power cycles in that auto cycle, diesel cycle, dual cycle, battery cycle all those things we will be looking at how to use it for the analyzing the various uh, power producing devices. And then we will be moving to the refrigeration cycle in which we will be talking about vapor compression refrigeration and gas refrigeration cycles. And uh, if the time will permit we will look at the thermodynamic potential and Maxwell relations which will be important to find out properties and then also lot of applications like you know uh, which you can use you know relate the measurable property with the unmeasurable properties and uh, that we will be doing. So, what I would suggest that you can refer this book textbook engineering thermodynamics and by D. P. Mishra and the references book you can do uh, you can uh, you know refer this thing like is a very good book like an engineering approach by Sengel and Bowles and fundamental thermodynamics by Sontag and uh, Bogne and Van Weilen. He is the first he is the in author who made this book and later on these two authors have been added to that. And this is a quite old book and very interesting book. So, beside this you can refer any other book, but I would suggest that not only we attend the lectures, but also the reads the book because it is very important all the things I may not tell you, but it will be written in the book. I think we will stop over here then we will resume the next lecture.